You're watching the 700 Club. Delighted to have you with us. We've got a very interesting guest coming up. In the 1960s, a native Puerto Rican who was living in New York named John Jimenez chose to give up drugs and live for Christ. Two decades later, he helped launch a rally on our nation's capital and change the political landscape of our country. John has since passed away, but his wife, Ann, is carrying on his legacy, and she's reminding people of the power of simple choice. Daily, we are forced to make choices, some insignificant, some life-altering, and those choices have the power to change our lives. Ann Jimenez, pastor, author, and international speaker, believes she has uncovered the source of making right choices. I believe I have found that one of the keys to the kingdom, folks. This opens up the Bible to me. In her new book, Pro Choices, Ann Jimenez shares practical truths from God's Word that will equip you to choose your way into the happy, fulfilling, and successful life God has for you. Ann Jimenez, the author of this book called Pro Choices, is here with us now. And it's good to see you again. God bless you. Thank you, Pat. Thank it's so you. good to see you. Yeah. I know you had a real setback I, oh, for a I few minutes. A, I had a stroke real quick yes. and it was gone, but it, God. God didn't want me to no. be uh, crippled up and he, he... He has more for you to do, a lot I, I think a lot more. Absolutely. I'm going to... Well, we were supposed to get 120 from Noah. That's what he said after yeah. the flood. I'm claiming it. All right. <laughs> well, you're going strong. I, I'm on my way. <laughs> now, there's, I, there's a, this book called Pro-Choice. I want to ask you a profound theological question. People think, okay, I got saved, and therefore I can do whatever I please because I'm saved. Once saved, always saved. And I'm, I'm, I'm in, and, you know, I'm, the, the blood of Christ washes away all my sins. But you say that's not the case, that we have choices we make, and we're going to give account for those choices. Each idle word that we utter, we'll give account for. Talk, yes. talk to us about that. Pat, uh, God began to deal with me. I woke up in the middle of the night, uh, three nights in a row, and kept hearing, Seek ye first the kingdom of God yeah. and His righteousness. Yeah. And I'd lay there and I'd think, no, I know about seeking the kingdom of God. I know God. And I know I'm in His kingdom. I know I'm born again. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever told me to seek righteousness. And think what the word seek means. Mm -hmm. Look for it. Search for it. Reach for it. That's right. Grab for it. Righteousness? What in the world is that? I don't, I'm told to seek it. I don't even know what it is. Mm -hmm. And I began, I said, well, what does it mean? Righteousness. Right. Then I thought, right choices? Mm -hmm. And I, I thought, you know, Abraham believed God. It was counted to him yeah, for, for righteousness. Righteous. He made the right choice when he believed God. That's right. And so I began to sing, you know, uh, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed. The right, those that make the right choice are never forsaken yeah. and their seed begging bread. And I realized that I, when I looked it up, Dake's Bible says that it means right doing. Everywhere, sometimes in the Bible, something will mean a little bit shade of this here, and it means a little bit stronger. This, this never varies, no variation in its meaning. Right doing, right choices. So every scripture that you can think of that has the word righteousness in it always means right choice or right doing. And you know, if if we seek God's will, He sets before us His plan, and there's always the enemy's plan. He set before Adam and Eve. He's, and he said in Deuteronomy, I set before you life and death. That's right. But he said, choose life. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll affect you and your children. But you know, we know that Adam made the wrong choice. Yeah. And then you mark your children for God. I wrote a little book about that. And he marked his sons, Cain and Abel. They, they had to have known what Adam and Eve did. They had to have known about their choice. And the eldest son, Abel, chose, yeah, chose yeah, Cain, and yes, they, they yeah. made the wrong choice. Yeah. And ever since, man has made the wrong choice and gambled that he could get away with but it. But what you're saying is you don't just skate scot-free that you're going to pay the price. Exactly. There is a way or a path that seems right, right. unto a man. But the end thereof, and the word really means it's deadly. Yeah. It's deadly. If you choose your own way, uh, 
you know, there's a pleasure in, in sin for a season. Yeah, that's right. It's very brief. But the wonderful thing about choosing God's plan, sometimes it, maybe it's not what you thought you'd do or what you had planned, but when you begin to seek to be led by the Spirit, mm -hmm. and the Spirit of God always agrees with the Word of God, yeah. always, never, no, never deviates. And if you're led by the Spirit of God, we had led Daniel through a lion's den, but he, yeah. came, he, he came out and he was whole. It led the three Hebrew children, doing the will of God, led them right. through a fiery furnace. Right. They came out without the smell of smoke. Amen. So uh, God's way is always the best way. And they live to tell about it. See, a lot of people, don't, they choose their way. They never live to tell about it. And what you're saying is God has a plan for us, though, doesn't he? Yes, he does. And, and Absolutely. We're free moral agents, Pat. Yeah. And we can choose. But he says, I set before you life and death. Yes, yes. If you choose life, you've chosen my way. Everybody, if you ask a crowd of believers, you say, how many of you are seeking God's will for your life? Everybody's hand would go up. Yeah. A request, come pray for yeah. me that I'll know the will of God. I want to tell you, I can, you can know the will of God. Go to the road map. It's the Bible. <laughs> it's sure That's the answer. You find it in the Bible. And you, you can find out what God has for you, what he wants you to do. The problem is, I've had people say to me, I know what he wants me to do. I just don't want to do it. Well, now they, that's admitting it. Isn't it. What about the 23rd Psalm? It's a meant a lot. It's in this book. Oh, it is. The Lord is my shepherd. And uh, if we're being led by the Spirit of God, we're never alone. We're never forsaken. If we're choosing his path and going his way, uh, he sets me, you know what I love? He prepares a table. It was planned ahead of time. Right. A table spread in the, in the, in before my enemies. Yeah. He will let even your enemies see the grace of God in your life, the favor of God, mm -hmm. and the blessings of God. You'll live long enough. Pat, I've lived long enough to say, yes, there really is a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And really? by that, I mean that scripture that says, you know, it, if, if, if it's a uh, forsaken mother, father, brethren, sister, houses, lands. He said, uh, you'll be blessed a hundredfold. That means a hundred times right. in this life yeah. with persecution. Mm -hmm. And we all get a little of that. Yeah. But, and in the world to come, I'm not just waiting to go to heaven to be blessed. I am being blessed by wow. God right. all the time. We all are. Amen. We choose God's way. We have peace of mind. Well, these consequences, though, they're in this world. They're yes. temporal and eternal. Yes. Oh, yes. They're both. Yes. Um, talk about your 11-year-old. We, we're running out of time, but you had an 11-year-old nephew that yes. got, got on, <laughs> under your skin. What, what almost happened? <laughs> well, that was the nephew that came to me by, by accident. My sister's youngest boy, she sent him to me. He was 11 years old, and he came by bus. When he got there, he was not used. To, he was not churched. He was not used to anything. And the first night when it came church night, I said, "Well, we're all getting ready." And he said, "Do I have in that attitude? Do I have to go to church?" And I turned around on the tip of my tongue. I was going to say, "We all go to church around here, and if you don't like it, I'll send you home." And just as I turned, Pat, our God in my heart, He said, "Don't you ever tell him you'll send him home. He is home." Amen. And thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, it's called Pro Choices. Wherever books are sold and Gemini is, you want to get a copy. And thanks for being with us. God bless you. Thank you, Pat. Pleasure. Appreciate you. God Pleasure. bless you.